Hello and welcome to our final video on our beautiful soup series. So in the previous video, we kind of explored more fine methods, but in that particular video, we weren't kind of talking broadly about like a find all method. We were talking one that was more related to, you know, relationships in the tree. So finding a particular tag's parents, a sibling. Uh, we were also talking about uh, finding a particular tag's next element or previous elements. And we kind of saw that it's very similar to using a find or find all method, but now we're just doing a very specific type of search. Um, and so in today's final video, what we're gonna be talking about is, uh, the first part we're gonna talk about is manipulating attribute values. So a lot of people are kind of surprised initially when they realize that you can actually change um, certain values inside the HTML code. We're not gonna go through all of them, but kind of just expose you to it. Um, and then kind of explain may maybe why you would wanna do this. Uh, then we're also going to talk about deleting attribute values. Um, we're going to also talk about extracting uh, certain tags. Uh, and when we talk about extraction, we mean actually like kind of removing it from the code. So it's no longer part of that HTML code. So if you run it again, um, it wouldn't be there. And then we're also going to talk about extracting strings. So this is something that's very popular. A lot of times when you're doing web scraping, what is your goal? Your goal is to get some kind of text that is off of the particular website. And so um, a lot of times we have to kind of keep that in mind. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna insert our cell below. Uh, right now I am working with a particular table that was from my Wikipedia page. So if you think a couple of videos back, we were working with our Vic Wikipedia page um, and we were getting certain tables and stuff like that. So all I have right here is that code for a particular table in that web page. And now that we have that, we're just gonna play around with some of the tags that belong to this table. And so the first thing that we're gonna talk about is how do we change an attribute value? So say for example, if you go here, uh, I think it's this one. So this is the first A tag. What if I wanna change the particular value of this A tag? Or maybe I wanna change the particular value of this a tag, how would I go that? And when I'm talking about the actual value, I'm talking about the attribute value. So maybe I wanna change the href value, um, or maybe I wanna add a new attribute to this particular um, tag. How do I do that? Well, the first thing that you're normally gonna do is you're just gonna go right here. And so the first thing is you would grab your tag. So in this case, I'm gonna say grab the a tag. And then from here, we'll just put it in, uh, we'll say a tag. I don't know why I said header tag. <laughs> um, table dot a. So this will return the a tag, the first instance of an a tag. Uh, and so we can see this pretty much lines up exactly with the first one. And now that we have that a tag, um, maybe we want to get an attribute from it. So we know this that we can get an attribute by simply passing through the key. This goes back to video one. So maybe I wanna display the href, right? Well, how would that look like? Well, we'll do display, um, a tag, we put our brackets and then we put our key. Our key is simply the attribute value. In this case, it's href. And so this returns the actual href value. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll actually display the a tag too, just so you guys can see it. So we start with this. We got the href attribute value, which lines up with that. Maybe I wanna add a new attribute value. Well, what you can do is if you actually just take the a tag, put a key, and then you can just name that particular attribute. So maybe I wanna add a style attribute to that a tag. Well, all I would do is I would pass through the key style and then the value that I want assigned to it. What would that look like? So we still have the original one, let's print out the new one. And so we'll say a tag. Ah, see? But keep in mind, once you've run it, it's it, that's, that's what it is going forward. I would technically have to run all of the code above it in order to get back the original code that was on that particular web page. But now we notice that this one now has a new attribute called style. 
Why might you want to do this? Well, when it comes to web scraping, maybe you want to go through everything and if it has a certain value, you want to tag it a certain way. This is an easy way to do that. Now you can kind of go through and mark the pieces that are important because maybe you don't want to pull them just yet, but you want an easy way where you can reference back the tags you've already worked with and kind of make like a note on it and saying, hey, this is the one that I've worked with and I don't want to necessarily extract it yet, but I do want it to tag it so that way going forward I have an easy way to identify the tags I want to work with. So this is how we do that. This is how we change the values to it. So really all we're doing is we're adding a new attribute value. And be like this is permanent. Okay, and so we'll insert a cell below. That's how we add a particular attribute. We can also do it with strings. So maybe I want to take that existing A tag and I want to add a string to it. Well, what I can do is I can just call the string attribute and then I'll say, hey, this is my new string. So it's like I'm adding a new attribute, but now I'm just adding a string component. So if I do A tag, it's the same exact thing, but now we have this actual string component that's been added to it. So here, we add a new string to the A tag. So again, just another way to manipulate it if you so choose. Well, if we can add values, I'm sure that we can delete values, right? Of course we can. So we'll insert a cell below. Again, I'll create a new tag. I'll say table.a. So here I'm just gonna grab the first A tag. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually display that tag just so we can see how it looks before. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call the clear method. So what this will do is it will remove all of the strings associated with it. So when I ran it the second, sometimes you have to run it twice in order to kind of see it. But what it did is it removed that particular string. So just kind of that first um, component with it. And so now there's nothing left with it. No longer has that string. So here we can think of it as removing the string attached to the A tag. Now keep in mind, when we call the A tag again right up here, it still took our old one up here. Why is that? Well, remember, once I've made that change, it's permanent. I have to go through the entire code again in order to get it um, kind of the original code. So once you make these changes, they're ch you can't change it back unless you kind of go through the process of adding it back or something, or you run the code again. So you just have to keep that in mind. Once you do this, you've committed to it unless you're planning to run it again. Okay. So now that we see we can change the attribute values and remove attribute values, the last thing I'm going to talk about related to kind of these tag things is we're going to talk about extracting a tag. Why might you want to extract a tag? In some cases, it might just be easier to work with that particular tag. And so what we can do is let's first bring up a table. So we'll call the table object that we have and then we'll call the table body. So I just want to see the body component. And you know, for whatever reason, maybe you just want to extract this particular header tag. Well, when you do this, you actually are kind of removing that code from this little table body. So here, uh, grab a table body, and then what we'll do is we'll extract it and we'll store it in a new variable. So we'll say, hey, table, dot t body you can't and then we'll call the table header tag and we'll call the extract method so we'll say extract the first table header and then again we want to see it so display the extracted tag and so we'll do display th tag uh, it's kind of long, but it's okay, I guess. So if you see right down here, it is actually there. Um, what I'll do is I'll comment that out. 
right? Now, keep in mind, if you keep running it and you keep running it, then what happens is you run out of header tags. So it just keeps going to the next one. So if you do it once, that's one tag. And then if you call it again, that's the next tag. And then once you've extracted it, it's gone. It's no longer part of that body code. So again, keep this in mind. I wanna show you this because I kept running it and running it. Eventually, it's not gonna have any table header tags left. Now, I could change this you know, to a table row, but again, you notice how it's changing each time? If I keep doing this, eventually that will pop up, which is there's no more rows left. There's nothing left to pull. So you just gotta be careful when you use this to understand that when you run it, it's permanent. You've accepted that you no longer want it part of that code. Now, this is just an easy way to extract it. And once you've extracted it, you know, then you can manipulate it just like that. And then you kind of have this remainder shell that basically is, it has all the important parts that you've taken out. So it does come in handy sometimes, but you just have to understand how to use it and kind of its drawbacks. Okay. So now that we've done that, we're going to talk about our last little topic, and that's about strings. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to run this all again just to make sure nothing's kind of, you know, messed up or anything like that. So we're going to run it all. Okay, so it's fine at this point. I'm happy. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to talk about how do we extract a string from a particular um, table. And so what we'll first do is we'll just do the most basic example, which is just grab the first string that you encounter in a particular tag. And so we'll say grab the first string that you find in the table header tag, right? Just again, something simple, nothing too complicated and then we'll display that string. So we'll call the table object, we'll go to the table header tag, and then we'll call the string attribute. Now we've worked with this before, we know how it works. Um, apparently it doesn't like it. <laughs> what happened? Does this have to be back to that? Uh, I might run it again, just to be safe sometimes. Okay, so for whatever reason, it ran the second time. Again, I've kind of been playing around and deleting stuff, so that tends to happen a little bit to say the least. Um, but we see that all it did is it took the first string that it encountered when I worked with that particular table header tag. Now, this is with one string. That's all fine and dandy, but a lot of times we want to extract a bunch of strings especially with tables. With tables, we wanna extract almost all the strings because that's usually where our data lives. Well, there's a really easy way to do this. Instead of using string, we're gonna use strings, S at the end. So here we'll get all the strings that belong to a table body, right? So we're just gonna take our existing table and I want all of the strings that belong to that table. So we're gonna say for string in, we're gonna call the table object, the table body tag, and then we're gonna call the strings attribute. Now, here's the thing. If I run this, it's gonna run all the code and you know everything like that. I don't wanna technically show everything because it, then it just takes a little bit longer to load and everything like that. I just wanna show like the first 10. So in order to kind of slice this object, I actually have to convert it to a list first. The reason why is this returns a generator object. I cannot slice a generator object. However, if I convert that generator object to a list and then I slice it, that's all fair game. So what this is doing is it's taking our generator object, it converts it to a list, and then I'm simply just slicing like the first 10 components. And then I'm looping through those first 10. I'm gonna print out each string And now we see that we get back strings. Now, keep in mind, there are line breaks. Line breaks are considered strings. A lot of time, this is the stuff we don't want. <laughs> you know, we don't care about line breaks. That doesn't help us at the end of the day for data collection. Now, what we can do is there's actually another attribute called stripped strings. And with that one, it doesn't consider 
line breaks and tabs and all that kind of fun stuff. So that's kind of the, the more efficient one. And I would call it the more popular one because a lot of times you don't want the line breaks. Um, and so it's very simple. All we're going to do is we're just going to change um, strings to stripped strings. And then with this one, you'll notice that um, we're no longer going to get any of those kind of like line breaks as we call them, right? So we'll do control enter. We'll go down. That looks much cleaner. That's easier to work with. And then once you have it in this framework, you can do all sorts of stuff. You can put it in a list. You can do more kind of formatting and stuff along that nature. But at least you've got the pure data. And that's usually half the battle, as I call it. Once you've got the pure data, go out there, do what you want to do. It's usually a lot easier than trying to do everything manually and everything like that. But with that being said, that is the final video for this series. So, you know, again, if you have any questions about beautiful soup in general, if you have any questions about the topics we covered in today's video, uh, please make sure to put them down in the comments below. I want to make sure I can kind of help you through it, ideally. Um, and then also, if you could, uh, please make sure to like the video just so that way kind of, you know, other people can find it. Um, you know, we're still trying to grow the channel and all that kind of fun stuff. And kind of helps us give direction of what kind of content to be covering. And then also, if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates. Um, I'm planning to release two videos today. These are both going to be the beautiful soup ones. And then I'm still deciding my next topic. More than likely, it's going to be machine learning. Uh, I'm doing some stuff on linear regression, scikit-learn, um, Kuros, and that kind of fun stuff. And then I'm also continuing the VBA Python stuff just because that's been a very popular topic. But I think there's kind of a more couple framework ones that we need to kind of go through first before we go into some other stuff. So, uh, yeah, thanks again for watching, guys. We will see you in the next video.